Den siste foredragsholderen under dagens seminar er Claire Edwards. Og nå skal vi opp i det høyere luftlag. Hun har hittil, eller og inntil nylig arbeidet for FN som redaktør av tekster om internasjonale avtaler som skal hindre militarisering av verdensrommet. Men så dukket et 5G opp og planer om å sende mer enn 20 000 satellitter eh, opp i verdensrommet, ble kjent, for å gi hele vår planet 5G-dekning. Med dagens teknologi kan det gjøres med ganske små satellitter på bare noen få kilo hver, og man kan sende ut en hel haug eh, av dem om gangen. Så glemmer jeg å finne fram rette foil. Eh, Hun eh, organiserte sammen med Arthur Firstenberg, som er forfatteren av den usynlige regnbuen, eh, den globale 5G-appellen, eh, som er en appell til alle lands regjeringer, og er nå undertegnet av mer enn 250 000 forskere, medisiner og andre helsearbeidere, og også av folk med andre slags bakgrunner. Og den krever en stans da, i utrulling av 5G, og forklarer hvorfor. Hun vil ikke bare fortelle oss om satellitplanene, men hun vil også fortelle oss om det arbeidet som gjøres nå internasjonalt for å stanse 5G-utrullingen. Så, so, thank you. The floor is yours, Claire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. if you want to point that okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Or you can use that point. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, it's a little bit high for me. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming, and I'd like to thank Aina for organizing this. Um, so, we've heard a lot of facts today. Um, I didn't understand all of them, but I'm sure you did. Um, so... I actually don't want to present my presentation at this stage because I want to say something different. Um, I'm here representing Gaia, representing Mother Earth. We all remain very much in the intellect and we've heard a lot of facts today, but we need to move to the heart because actually for me, Fifth generation, 5G, for me, it generates the principle of care. The reason that you are here today is because you care. The reason that I am here today is because I care. And everything I realize that I have been involved in this now for a number of years, 5G for the last 16 months. And what has driven me always is the principle of care because I was working at the UN and they put up these public access points on the ceiling and I knew that these would damage the people that I worked with and I wanted to stop that. And so, last year, I ended up going to the Secretary General and telling him that these were very, very dangerous, and he ignored me. Um, and about a year ago, Professor Martin Paul submitted a document to ICNIRP um, criticizing their revised guidelines. And I edited that document, and a number of people sent comments. And there was one man in particular where I, I was going back and forth, picking up the comments and making a note of the comments. And I went and I opened this particular comment, and this man said, this I am electro-hypersensitive he said, I'm affected by this electromagnetic radiation and this world is hell for me because nobody takes any notice and if 5G comes, I may end my life. Well, I burst into tears. I cried and cried for 10 minutes about this man 
and how the world had abandoned him. So what always drives me is the principle of care. And the fact that you have come here today demonstrates that you also care. So I'd like to move now from the facts and the intellect, and I'd like to move to the heart, to how we feel about this. So take a moment, please. You've listened to the facts now. What do you feel? What do you feel in your solar plexus now about this? Because that is what drives you. And I, I am not driven by fear. None of us are driven by fear. This is not a motivator. Love is a motivator. And we heard earlier from Michael Chapman Pincher about the butterfly. This is the only insect that we love, he told us. And this is the only insect that survives electromagnetic radiation. There's nothing more powerful in this universe than love. And it's love that will save us from electromagnetic radiation. So we have um, the beautiful Earth. What you see here is our beautiful mother planet surrounded by the space debris that exists already. So already there are millions of pieces of space debris up there. And one of the major, major considerations for the UN, I used to edit the documents um, in Vienna for the committee that deals with outer space. And their major concern was two things, space debris and weaponization. So year after year after year, they talked about the concern of space debris. And now we're faced with a situation where uh, the plan is to put up 53,000 satellites in space. So uh, this has to be disastrous. You can see here, this is the Earth. This is what our brain looks like, and this is what the universe looks like. As above, so below. Our brains function on the Schumann resonance, 7.83 hertz, which is the resonance of the Earth. We're connected to the Earth. I'd like you to take a moment to think about your connection with the Earth, your emotional connection with the Earth. For me, um, I often look up at a tree and I look through the leaves and I see the sun filtering through and twinkling and the leaves are radiant green and it moves me, it touches me. This is my connection with this planet. What's your connection with the planet? Take a moment to think about what is it that has particularly resonated with you? Is it your connection with water, with snow, with the trees, with the animals? What's your connection in your heart? What do you feel about your connection with your planet? And are you going to allow your planet to be destroyed? We have to think about not just the terrestrial 5G, but the fact that these satellites would surround the entire Earth and blanket the entire planet, putting everything in jeopardy. Not just humans, as we've heard, but wildlife, the entire environment. This, this is what we really care about. Um, I talked to Cecil. I've been staying with Cecil, and she told me about being electro-hypersensitive for 35 years. Now, last year, I, was, I live in Vienna, and my friend in Vienna, a Swedish friend, became electro-hypersensitive. And I watched this happen over just the space of three weeks. She became electro-hypersensitive. And we drove around trying to find a place where she was not tortured. She was tortured in her eyes, in her ears, every part of her body. She had buzzing organs. Um, she, she couldn't function. And in the end, 
she, we slept in the woods in my car because I didn't want her to sleep alone in the, in the woods. So we slept together in the woods for two nights because this was the only place where she could be free from the electromagnetic radiation. And in the end, she left Austria. Within one week, she had to drive away from Austria because she could not be there. She was tortured everywhere. So she left the country after living there for 30 years. And she left. And she left her children. Um, she was divorced, but her children were still teenagers. So she, she left her family and she went back to Sweden. So this is the global electric circuit of the Earth. And Aina asked me to describe the mechanism by which the satellites would affect us. Well, what I found when I did the research is that just because we've named the global electric circuit does not mean that we understand it. We don't understand it. It's far, far too complex. And you need scientists from many, many different fields to study this. It's not understood. So what kind of madness is it to be putting up 53,000 satellites there when we don't know the consequences? So th these are the companies that are putting up these satellites. And I think just last week, um, Musk and his SpaceX company um, applied for permission to put up 30,000 more. So now we have a total planned of 53,000. So what we, what we do know is that um, the ionosphere and the magnetosphere amplify the radiation by 100,000 times. Um, so these are the symptoms that electrohypersensitive people have. And in 1998, the very first satellites went up. And my writing partner on the appeal, Arthur Furstenberg, kept records of what happened at that time. Now, that was only 66 satellites, not 53,000. So they found that uh, thousands of uh, homing pigeons lost their way. People had asthma attacks, nosebleeds, knife-like sensations in the head, stabbing pains in their chest, feeling like you're going to have a heart attack. These are exactly the symptoms that my Swedish friend had last year. And uh, the, particularly the US national death rate rose 4 to 5%. Now, power line harmonic radiation, it's already established that um, the power line harmonic radiation is having an effect on the ionosphere and the magnetosphere. We know that already, it's established. Uh, we also know from studies that these rockets that um, will launch the satellites, um, they produce black soot. So this is going to be devastating for the climate. Um, the space debris issue, so as I said, we have already millions of pieces of space debris up there, and um, you have the issue of um, a Kessler syndrome. So there's a, a, hyp a hypothesis by uh, a man called Kessler who posits a cascade effect where you reach a point where you have so much debris that it starts colliding, all the pieces start colliding with each other with a cascade effect. And he says, if this happens, then um, the space orbits could be unusable for thousands of years. And we do depend on satellite. We depend on satellites for our weather forecasting, for our communications, for our aircraft, for remote sensing the Earth. There are lots of reasons why we're already quite dependent on satellites and we can't afford to lose the, the Earth orbits. Um, there's a, a project that you're probably aware of, I imagine, which is called HARP. 
and you have, um, it's an ionospheric heater, and you have this also in Tromsø in Norway, which is part of it. And I think it's interesting that there are very close parallels between HARP and 5G. So, um, whoops, sorry. Um, so, um, both of them use banks of antennas in phased arrays. Both of them have a beam forming ability. Um, both can be used as a communication system. Both of them have the capacity to disrupt people's mental function. Um, it, they can both impair brain performance of very large populations. So whole regions of uh, people's mental function um, and emotions can be changed by this. Um, whoops, sorry. Um, uh, both of them can do voice-to-skull communication, putting a voice into people's heads. Both of them can heat the skin, which has already been discussed today. Um, they can both change people's emotional state, manipulate thought and behavior. And we know this from Iraq. Uh, during the war in Iraq, um, the soldiers, the uh, Iraqi soldiers, just put down their arms, uh, their weapons, uh, because they had been fed a frequency which put them into fear and panic. So we have the proof of this. Um, and it can also, both of them can also make individuals very slow or hyperactive. And we also know this from electro-hypersensitive people. Now we've had a whole lot of warnings from different people about the threats of 5G. This is what Professor Martin Paul says, could be the results breakdown in mental function, sterility, damaged heart function, and societal collapse. So imagine if people's brain function is affected. And we know that the brain function is already affected from 25 years of cell phones. Um, the Russian president has said that the hope that new technologies would help, would save the planet, turned out to be illusions. Um, an EU report this year has told us that it's not possible to accurately simulate or measure 5G emissions in the real world. We simply don't know the consequences. All we can do is extrapolate from the science that we have from earlier generations of wireless technology to imagine that 5G would be much worse given what we know about the, the technicalities of 5G. Um, more warnings. So you have NOAA and um, NASA in the United States um, that are saying that uh, this could seriously affect their work. It could seriously affect weather forecasters' ability to predict major storms, and, um, and, um, and it could lead to loss of life. Um, so, as I said, 5% of the world's population are already tortured by microwave sickness. It's called electrohypersensitivity because when you call it electrohypersensitivity, it points the finger at the person. Oh, you are electrohypersensitive. You have a problem. No, no. The person is, is exposed to an environmental toxin. That's the problem. It's not that that individual is particularly special. We're actually already, all of us, affected by it, but to different degrees. And we don't know why some people are more affected sooner than others. It's just uh, it's not known at this stage. Um, now, Switzerland is very much the epicenter of all this. Uh, they had 5G earlier than some of the other countries. And uh, so we already have evidence from Switzerland about how the people in Geneva are suffering. The precautionary principle. Um, the precautionary principle should be invoked when there is any doubt. We have already in excess of 28,000 studies which talk about the biological effects of electromagnetic radiation. 
But we don't need 28,000 studies to invoke the precautionary principle. This is enshrined in EU law. If there is one study which casts doubt and presents dangers, that is enough to invoke the precautionary principle. So you have a number of governments, the governments of Austria, Belgium, Germany, Netherlands, in the German's case, it was the Federal Office on Radiation Protection, which said that 5G would expose people to very much higher levels of, electro of uh, electromagnetic radiation. And the fact that they have all drawn attention to the dangers of 5G should mean that they invoke the precautionary principle. They haven't done so. So what we have is a collapse in the rule of law. We have laws that should be protecting us and they're not being invoked. Um, you have a lot of legal cases going on right now. There's a huge amount of pushback uh, right around the world. Um, people bringing cases against the Federal Communications Commission um, and, uh, and the governments and the telecommunications companies. So these are some of the legal cases in the different countries. Um, you've got liability actions going on. We have to be aware that the insurance companies and the reinsurance companies will not provide insurance against any damage or injuries from electromagnetic radiation. Um, and uh, there's another liability case in the Netherlands here. Uh, where people are claiming compensation in advance against uh, what may happen if 5G is rolled out. And more in the UK, in the US. Um, we do have a liability convention, so there is a space liability convention, and, uh, and the liability convention says that um, any launching state is liable under the liability convention. So uh, this is a state which launches or procures the launching of a space object and a state from whose territory or facility a space object is launched. So under the liability convention, um, they must require um, these commercial companies to have insurance. But the commercial companies are commercial companies. By definition, you don't allow a commercial company to go into space. Uh, no commercial company, I mean, they, they have limited liability. So how can you allow them to put space objects up there? They are not going to be careful about space debris. Whatever undertakings they may make, uh, ultimately they are commercial companies and they won't be bothered. So, for me, I find myself in Norway, and I was reminded, as we were talking last night, that Norway is the country of Edvard Munch. And what has been in my mind the whole time that I have been dealing with 5G, this image from Edvard Munch, the scream, this is how I feel about 5G. It's a scream from my innermost being. So this is about love. And 5G generates love. It generates more and more love in me as I go on with this campaign. And every terrible thing that I hear about 5G just actually motivates me with more compassion for the fellow inhabitants of this planet, whoever they are, human beings or insects, wildlife, the trees, it's the compassion and it's the love that drives me. So I would say to you, we have to pass through the fear about 5G. Once you really understand why, what 5G is, you feel a terror such as you've never felt in your life, when you truly understand it. Because this is potentially an annihilation event 
for the entire planet. But you move beyond that fear. That fear is actually liberating. And where you come to is love. And I think that you will be there very soon. Tack också till Claire Edwards. Då är er det slut på seminariet och då är er det bara att önska alla sammen väl vidare och tack för att det kom och hoppas att det har varit intressant.